Well, hello friends. Today we are going to take a quick look at the um, branch that um, Joshua has going on here for his port of the Serenity desktop to the um, uh, da, 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 OpenBSD system. So um, specifically, I wanted to take one of his patches that he still has to do to make uh, Serenity run on OpenBSD and just make it not necessary. And um, if we look here, we can see that he has 35 commits um, on top of Serenity Master needed currently to make it run. So, and, and um, we've already landed like a whole bunch of uh, portability fixes from Joshua today. So I think something like 25 fixes already are already in the tree, which is really cool. So um, I was thinking I should do this one. So on OpenBSD, they use <clears throat> POSIX OpenPT to open a pseudo terminal, whereas on Serenity, we just manually open the PTY multiplexer device. So yeah, let's implement POSIX OpenPT, grant PT, and unlock PT. And uh, first thing we're going to have to look at uh, what those things actually do. Unlock PT and grant PT. Um, um, so I think this is basically the same as just what we were doing. Um, it's just um, a way to open in both of these. I guess we can put it instead of lib. And for control is probably for these guys. So POSIX OpenPT opens a pseudo terminal uh, pair and then uh, gives you back a file descriptor for the master, I think. Ah. And unlock PT will unlock it. I'm not sure what that means. We don't really have a concept of a locked pseudo terminal, so I guess we can just make this like a no op. <clears throat> or, I mean, we could actually. We could fail a little bit. I don't know. It doesn't seem terribly important, actually. We could probably just say, yeah, that's fine. And Grand PT will change the mode and ownership. <clears throat> of the slave pseudo terminal associated with a mm -hmm. master. Okay. So I think we already do this automatically on Serenity because when you create a pseudo terminal pair, so this terminal right here, for example, it runs as um, the zeroth pseudo terminal. So if you look in dev PTS, we can see that we have this guy right here. This is our slave side. And I guess, where do we see them? Where do we see the, if we look in system monitor, we can look at the terminal. Ah, so annoying when they run away. Um, and we can look at open files and we see that we have the master pseudo terminal <coughs> open here. So, the slave is already owned by me, like the anonymous user, the anon user, right? So we don't need to grant PT because the system instantiates the slave already owned by um, the user. So I think these can just be no ops. I mean, basically, like we could do some error checking, but it seems like no ops would be okay as well for now. So. Let's go in stdlib, stdlib, and just add some things here. So this would be um, POSIX open PT. Was that the name? Yes. Int flags. And then we'll also do grant PT and unlock PT. Oops, and we'll put these guys right here. And let 
let's see. So, dang it. Um, for this guy, we'll just say return zero. But for OpenPT, we want to do what that other code was doing. So wherever we are opening PTMX, which is in a couple of places, we basically want to do this, right? So we want to open the pseudo terminal multiplexer because this is a very special device in our system. Um, what happens when you open that device is that you don't actually get a file descriptor that points to that device. You get one that points to a pseudo terminal master um, that is instantiated on demand. And then you can ask the kernel, hey, what would be the corresponding slave uh, pseudo terminal path for this master? And that's how you uh, set up a um, pseudo terminal for use. But anyway, um, so this device is special. And actually, it's implemented in the kernel in the um, PTY multiplexer class. And it overrides, overrides something, open, right? So it overrides open. And if you override open in a device, that means that when the virtual file system tries to open this device, it will actually ask the device to open itself if possible. And this is how we're able to, instead of opening a reference to the PTY multiplexer, we'll instead instantiate a new master PTY here and return that. Anyway, so what we should do here is basically, we should now replace this POSIX open PT. Um, we can keep the flags. I noticed that um, here they don't list oclo-exec, which is a bit strange because we want that. So I'm thinking we're just going to allow oclo-exec, but um, it's weird that they don't like that. Maybe, what is this, Linux? Low exec. No, this is FreeBSD. Okay. And uh, wait, it's also FreeBSD. Okay, wait. Let's see the Linux one. Um, blah blah blah. Flags. So on Linux they do this. Well, I think we should allow low exec. Otherwise, we have to set it anyway with full control. So. Uh, let's just, let's just tolerate it. Legs. We can do something like this. I'll read right. Oh. Uh, Nocti. And oh, claw exec. Those are the ones we should allow, right? I already forgot. Right. Mm, or maybe we should reject anything that's outside of that, actually. So if flags and not that. Wait, what am I trying to do? I'm so tired. <laughs> um, if I have any other bits set, then return minus one, and I'll error C open. Yeah, okay. And then we'll just return open like that. That's cool. All right, so what he was doing here was just calling this exact sequence. So we'll do the same. Uh, I should change this also. And... Uh, 
Is that what it looked like before? Yes, it was. Mm. This one is read write, but not close exec. Call exec. So it's good to know. Um, of course, that makes sense since this is the uh, telnet server. It would be weird if we close this to the terminal uh, on exec. Okay, so uh, now we have to rebuild everything, but I think this will be a good change. Um, wonder if this is going to screw up the OpenBSC port anyway, since maybe they don't tolerate uh, Clow exec. POSIX OpenBT. Show me your main page, you guys. If O flag contains values other than those listed above. Mm -hmm. Well, I think since they don't care about this one, then I would say maybe you guys should um, include Clo exec for compatibility with other systems as well. But what do I know? Since FreeBSD is already doing it. It makes sense to me to allow that. Because otherwise you just have to call fcontrol anyway. We have to remember to grant and unlock. If grant pt. Well, let's play it fast and lose with these guys. Or am I going to regret that? Uh, yeah, I think I don't care terribly much about these. Okay, let's just do this. We can go and make these things do something at some point. <laughs> I'm not sure that we need to, but no. We'll do it in the terminal at least, since that's the thing that's being used on OpenBSD. And here we just assert if it doesn't work out. So Service the one place I should be paranoid about this. Ah, well, at least this is giving me something to do while the compile is going in the background there. All right, um, great PT, client socket close. Just does a little change, change things. Mm. I think this will be a good change. So I'm sorry, Joshua, but 
<clears throat> we are going to allow Oclo exec, so <laughs> you'll still need to patch it a little bit, but you won't need these at least. Um, but maybe you can bring that back to OpenBSD. Maybe OpenBSD should tolerate this. I think that would be a good thing. I feel like Linux should do that too. Why don't people care about Oclo exec? Ah, oh, man. I wish I had more time to hack on something bigger today, but... Eh, it's something. So... We're good, and then if we go in the hack studio, and I think probably it's totally broken right now, but at least we could get a terminal lock, even though everything is... Majorly broken. Um, okay. Well, good enough for me. So we'll say let's see. Add POSIX open PT um, unlock print PT and unlock. Um, ba -ba -bum. this is this allows you to open this, this makes uh, getting a pseudo terminal pair uh, a little bit more affordable. Note that grant pt and unlock pt are currently on no ops since. Uh, we already we uh, we already granted the pseudo terminal slave to the uh, calling user. Um, we also accept um, Clawzak and Posix OpenPT, unlike some systems. This um, yeah, we we'll put one of those things. Okay, good, 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 good. So I think this is going to be it for today's video, since I'm in a bit of a hurry here. So um, I just want to say that uh, if you made it this far, then I thank you for watching and hanging out and so on. And I hope you saw something interesting. And um, I think that this uh, this whole port to port of the desktop to OpenBSD is, is a very interesting project. And I hope that we can um, we can we can get something really cool out of that. I don't know what will come out of it, but we'll see. Anyways, thanks for hanging out, and I will see you next time. Bye.